This VizCast is going to look at the magnetic force on a moving charge. Pause the video for a moment and read carefully through the question. Now you can see in the question we have a charged particle, in this case an ionized atom, with a particular speed moving into a magnetic field, whose direction we know something about, and then we know the subsequent motion of the charged particle, and the question is asking us to find the charge on this oxygen ion. So in the interpret phase of our solution here, we're going to be concerned with the magnetic force exerted by a field on a moving charge. In the development stage, let's draw ourselves a diagram. Let's have, for example, our oxygen ion moving along here at some speed. The ion will have some charge, and importantly, later on, we might have to think about the mass of this object as well, moving along with some speed that we're told about. And it moves into a region with a uniform magnetic field that's at right angles to the velocity of the ion. So just to keep things simple, let's draw the magnetic field going into the page in our workspace here. We actually don't have all the directional information we'd need to know exactly what kind of motion we're going to have. But with this kind of diagram, I can see as the charged particle moves in, it will start to undergo some kind of circular motion in here. And we're also told the radius of that particular circular motion. We can understand in this development stage why a charged particle might be undergoing this kind of motion, because the force, the magnetic force exerted on a moving charge, is the size of the charge Q, and then it's the cross product of the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. And so this is a force that will be at right angles to both the field and the velocity. And if an object is moving along with a force at right angles to its velocity, it doesn't speed up or slow down, but that right angled force will actually give rise to a curved path to circular motion. Uh, and importantly here, the magnitude of this magnetic force um, will be the charge times the velocity magnitude times the field magnitude multiplied by the sine of the angle between them. Now, as we know, this circular motion here requires a centripetal force, a force in the radial direction of the motion. And by Newton's second law, that will equal the mass of the particle multiplied by its centripetal acceleration, which we should recall from our circular motion work as v squared divided by r. So I think I have most of the quantities I'll need to know in these relationships, except for q, which is what we're being asked for. And I don't explicitly have here a mass for my particle, but it does tell me it's an oxygen atom. So I might remember that the mass of my oxygen atom here will be, if I look up in a table of data, it has an atomic mass of 16. And I better multiply that by an atomic mass unit to get everything in SI units in kilograms. So that's 1.66 by 10 to the minus 27. And that will give me the mass of my particle in kilograms. So now I should be able to move on to the evaluate stage where I can actually do my calculation. So the magnetic force on this particle I can see will be Q times V times B times the sine of the angle between them. In this case, the question told me they were perpendicular, so it's the sine of 90 degrees, which is just one, so it's Q, V, B. And this magnetic force must be what is giving rise to the circular motion. It must be supplying the required centripetal force. So it must equal MV squared divided by R. And now everything in this relationship that I have here, QVB, equals MV squared divided by R. Well, I can see straight away, I can cancel that V with one of the V squareds. But I can now just divide both sides by B, and I can find an expression for the charge, which will simply be MV divided by R times B. And I can put those values in there now. I know I have uh, 16 times 1.66 by 10 to the minus 27. That's the mass of my oxygen atom uh, in kilograms multiplied by the speed, which is 13.5 kilometers per second. So we'll convert that to meters per second. And then this is divided by the radius of the circular motion, which the question said was 15 millimeters. 
So again, we might convert that to meters, 10 to the minus three is a millimeter, um, and multiplied by the magnetic field, which is 50 millitesla. So again, 50 by 10 to the minus three. We can quite straightforwardly see with our powers of 10 here, we're gonna kind of dominate our calculation. We've got 10 to the minus 27 here as a large number on the top, and we'd have 10 to the minus six on the bottom, which onto the top would be 10 to the six, and another 10 to the three here would give us 10 to the nine. So we can see we're gonna end up with something here in a power of 10 to the minus 18 in our units of coulombs, because everything's been done in SI units. And that's probably what I should expect, something kind of of that order, because I'm talking here about an ionized oxygen atom, and I realize that this is probably gonna have a fairly small charge upon it, a charge of, of some small multiple of the electron charge we would expect. So now we can just put in uh, the numbers without the powers of 10, 16 times 1.66 times 13.5, divided by 15 times 50, and they're all numbers I can really easily pop into my calculator. And I come out with a value here, when I do that calculation, of 0 0.48 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. Let's just move this up a little bit here. So we've got some space to do an assessment step. And I think a really useful assessment step here might be again to consider that our oxygen atom is ionized because it's either gained or lost some electrons. So I might like to think about what does this charge on my ion look like as a fraction of the electron charge? And that's going to be my 0.48 times 10 to the minus 18 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, which is the electron charge in coulombs. And when I do that calculation, uh, it unsurprisingly perhaps comes out to be an integer which is what I'd really expect it to be. If this was a, a correctly set up question, then my oxygen atom should have either gained or lost an integer number of electrons, in this case, three. 